Next up, we have Damian Harris. Damian Harris finished with 743 yards from scrimmage in 10 games, uh, which in a 16-game season is just about 1,200 yards. Um, Only the Ravens and Titans ran the ball more than the Patriots did last season. Mm -hmm. You have James White on passing downs. You do have Cam Newton there, the vulture, the one, the only. Um, probably one of the bigger vultures in on any team, uh, but also leads to that you know hefty run, rushing attempt number as well. Um, what are you looking for out of Damian Harris? Do you think that he officially has the breakout season and overthrows Sony and it's his gig all year? It, I feel like he definitely over overtakes Sony, right? So yeah. Michelle is one of those guys where. He wasn't dynamic enough where, you know, when it was him and James White, it was, oh, well, when James White's in the game, they're going to throw. And when it's Sony Michelle in the game, they're going to run. Talk about predictable. Crazy. This comes down to Mac Jones. This comes down to Cam yeah. Newton. Yep. And, and what do you think is going to happen with the quarterback situation there? If Cam Newton's playing, that's going to hurt. Damian Harris's value strictly from a touchdown perspective, I think the yardage could still be there, but the the touchdowns are the killer. And we've talked about touchdowns win you fantasy leagues. You have to score touchdowns. Now, when Damian Harris played last year, he had 10 or more carries in every game except for one against Denver. And he basically averaged five plus yards in in pretty much every single one of those games. He was super productive when he played. He was fantastic when he played. So I, th- he is going so late that his upside is much greater than many other players that are going in that same, same range. Uh, what's his ADP right now? Is it, it's somewhere in the seventh round, I believe. Um, may- maybe even eighth, if you could check on that. So yeah, but they they ran yeah, the ball. You got him as the tenth pick in the seventh round. Yeah. So he again, New England ran the ball the third most times. Um, if if nothing else, Josh McDaniels um, and Bill Belichick like to run a balanced offense where they're going to run the ball just to make you respect it. Um, so yeah, I um, I like Damian Harris a lot. Uh, I'm expecting that he will get the vast majority of the plays. James White just he was there. He resigned. He just didn't seem like he played that much. Damian Harris or Raheem Mostert. Um that's a that's a tough one for me. Um because Raheem Mostert's so freaking fast. Like he's like wide receiver fast. And when he's healthy for two I weeks. think he's I think he's great. But for that right, that's the issue is can he stay healthy? And he's never really proven it. You and me talked about him last year going in like the fifth round of just having extreme value in one of those like ultimate boom or bust guys, right? Yeah. I think I think Damien Harris has a higher floor yeah. than, than most are by a considerable amount. Um I think Mostert has a slightly higher higher ceiling. Um, but I, I would tend to go for the floor, the higher floor guys. Miles Gaskin or Damian Harris. <sighs> Malcolm Brown started over Miles Gaskin week one. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like, I don't like Dolphins running backs. I don't I, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't really care for the Dolphins offense. Yeah, I, there's, there's just nothing there that I really want. Um, but the, I would say the Patriots offense is just like a step above that though. Like it's not it's, like this, like a baby step. Yeah. Not, it's like not a, like, Oh man, like a, I got to have baby ramp. The Patriots offense instead of the Dolphins offense. It's but both aren't very good. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think I would take Damon Harris over both of them, but that's probably just a higher four preference. I agree as well. I think Harris is the move. I think he's going to be one of the biggest mid-round draft values this year. Uh, I just think he has the potential to absolutely pop um, on pace for well over a thousand yards in a 16-game season. 
the man just missed games at the beginning of the year when people draft and after they draft, and then he missed a bunch of games at the end of the season when everybody needs their players the most. So here he comes walking in this year, sort of under the radar. You got Cam back and everybody just thinks Cam's going to ball hawk and that offense might not move a whole lot, but I also don't really think that Cam is going to start the whole year because he was abysmal for the majority of last season. So I also think a quarterback change could do good things for Damian Harris and get more of a traditional offense going again. Yeah. And I, you know, Damian Harris was good at Alabama. Uh, he was not a Najee Harris good at Alabama, um, nor does he have the receiving chops that Najee Harris does, obviously. So, it, you know, he, he did not have many catches last year in, in his limited work uh, while he was playing. And I, I would not expect him to have a ton of catches this year either. And I, what do you have, like four last year or something like that? Yeah. Uh, so... It's one of those things where that's uh, that's not going to cut it. So if he's not scoring touchdowns, um, he, he could be a bust. But I, I think that you and me both agree that the the carries will be there and the opportunities will be there. And hopefully Mac Jones takes over at some point in the season and then the touchdowns will start being there. Yep. Whoa, didn't see you there. You can't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry, I was just making some trades. How about you hit that subscribe button? I'll show you what it was. <laughs>